Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. We're going to have another terrific interview with Dr. Liz Lister. Uh, but how are you doing, Liz? Doing great, Art. Thanks. How are you? Good. Thank you. Dr. Liz, uh, we've talked about supplements before. Uh, I'm a big fan of supplements. I take uh, almost every vitamin you can think of. And, uh, and Art is less so. I know he takes a couple of things, but he's very cautious about what he puts into his body. Um, and I know that you have supplements you recommend, but I'm curious, what are, what are the really important supplements? I might be taking stuff that I don't really, I take things like fish oil and uh, stuff besides vitamins. Um, and I know I don't really necessarily need them, but I like, I like the idea of having the extra stuff. What's the most important supplements that I needed to be uh, concentrating on? Well, I, I'm more with you in terms of supplements, especially since I've learned more. Okay, I just want to say briefly, in medical school, in my medical training, out of four years of medical school, we had one week on nutrition. Wow. Okay, out of the entire time. And what I've learned since then with doing my own reading and conferences that I attend is that there's actually a lot of data on the benefits of vitamins and supplements Okay, a lot of it is published in other countries, in not mainstream journals in the United States necessarily. Okay, and so there's other reasons that, there's a variety of reasons that it's not as emphasized here in the US as it is in other parts of the world. But there are quite a few supplements and there's a few super basic ones and I thought those are the ones we could talk about today. Great, good, good. Most most people would benefit from doesn't nothing's a hundred percent in my line of work okay and the first one is vitamin d i believe we have spent time even here with this audience talking about vitamin d most people do not have optimal levels unless they supplement so uh -huh. dr liz the the idea of Vitamin D, D being the sunshine vitamin, I can go outdoors five minutes is all I really need outdoors and I've got enough vitamin D. Is that true? Do, um, is Can I get enough vitamin D from the sun if most I, people, I don't know, spend all day outdoors? Most people can't. Ah, that's interesting to your point. So first let me say that it's very easy to check vitamin D levels and that the ranges at most labs start at 30 okay and go up from there but optimal level is above 60 and this is very important lately i want everybody to have a very strong healthy immune system so to your question of can we just go outside all right so our skin this is why we know this and people think about it as the sunshine vitamin is because the active form is created in our bodies in the skin with exposure to sunlight however there's three howevers. Number one, as we get older, and by older I mean like over age 25, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Our skin's ability to produce the active form of vitamin D diminishes. That's number one. Number two wow. is if we wash with soap. Our skin, the, the production, that process is stopped. Hmm. Now is that stopped because there's a film of, of soap on my skin or does it affect the ability the, of the skin? Yes, the actual chemistry of the process is interrupted. And then wow. and then the third is sunscreen. Hmm. Okay. So we've got this choice to make when we go out in the sun, whether to expose yeah. the skin. So I just recommend a good quality, a good dose. It's almost impossible to overdose on vitamin D. So even when I have people taking a good supplement, I always say, if you're feeling any kind of little cold or any types of little symptoms, you're not feeling great, just take extra D. It has direct really? immune boosting functions. Mm -hmm. It's really, now really the, it's amazing. That's interesting because there's, um, um, for colds and things like that, there's a product out there uh, that is basically a vitamin C mm -hmm. booster. Um, so is C one of your essential uh, vitamins? 
It's not on my short list. I do sympathize with uh, folks like you, Art, who really don't, they do not want to have a long list of supplements to take. And so we can talk about the second one on my list, which is a good quality multivitamin. Okay. Okay. And then to your point, John, we could use, you know, we can say a vitamin C booster. A lot of people nowadays are taking it every day, which I think is fine. I don't think there's any harm. Uh, the data supporting it, it there's, there's a little bit of uh, discussion in the literature about it. Uh, but I do think it probably helps. Vitamin C, zinc, these types of supplements are, are very popular at the moment. And they probably do help the immune system. A multivitamin is going to have at least small quantities of a lot of different vitamins and minerals. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I don't yeah. take vitamin C because I'm not. I'm no longer concerned about rickets, uh, and, <laughs> and I'll eat a lemon every so often. But I guess we get enough vitamin C naturally in uh, everything that we do eat. And by the way, and, I, have, and our, I want to say you look like you've been sucking on a lemon lately. So thank you, thank you. I, I, I've improved. By, in other words, you're saying I look a lot better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I do want to admit that uh, I am, a, as a Dr. Liz Groupie, uh, I have adopted uh, uh, vitamin D uh, supplements uh, as well as my uh, multivitamin. So uh, I thank you for that. But I bet there's more than uh, two essential vitamins on your list, are there not? There are two more. There are two on my list for, on my short list for us today. And the next one, John, you mentioned this one, is fish oil. Oh, really? Yes, yes. And I want to take a moment to say one of the reasons that the, at least the United States medical community is against vitamins and feel that they don't help is because a lot of the studies, at least that are done in the U.S., they look at vitamins with only one variable. That is a they call a randomized controlled trial, which is considered the highest standard of research. However, that's not how the human body works. So yes, if you only change one nutrient, you may not see much in terms of measurable health outcomes. Fish oil, luckily, has gotten two really uh, supported indications there's actually a prescription form of fish oil for people with high tri triglycerides. No okay. kidding. Yeah. All righty. So without naming names, it's easy to find on the internet. Uh, but there's, a, a, yeah, a prescription form of it. Also, it's been very well studied in arthritis and specifically in rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. But that's some of the limited research done here. There's way more research about it, and it appears to actually influence and improve cardiovascular health by improving circulation. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting, which is why I started taking it. Yeah. 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 And so it's been associated with improved brain function. Anything that better circulation is going to help with, less heart disease, better brain function, uh, it seems that it may, one of the ways it might work is it makes red blood cells more pliable so that they circulate better through the tiniest of our capillaries in our uh, circulatory system. Yep. And my capillaries are getting tinier every year. I... <laughs> <laughs> By the way, so uh, the fish oil, um, uh, which is, again, uh, having had conversations with uh, you over the last year and a half, uh, that's one that I have taken. I took it in the past, but now I take it regularly. But um, the question is, if you eat fish, let's say once a week, would you not get enough from that? Or is it the type of fish? Or what are the issues uh, with that that make the supplement essential on your list? That's an excellent question. And it's not easy. Okay, two, two issues. First of all, I think fish is great. I like to eat fish. It's part of healthy diets in a lot of the world. And uh, but it would it would be tough to get a nice full dose, which is somewhere between one thousand and two thousand milligrams per day of wow. the omega threes, right? 
So there's a lot of products out there for vegans, for example, wanting to avoid fish. There's krill. And it's hard to make the equivalent. It's hard to know. And, of course, there's not a lot of data to help us figure that out. Uh, but I do like uh, fish oil as, a, as, as one of those basics. Uh, Dr. Liz, is there any downside to fish oil? You mentioned, for instance, that it's almost impossible to overdose on vitamin D. There are some vitamins that build up in your body you could overdose on and have negative effects. But is fish oil, is there any downside to fish oil? That's an excellent question. So I want to say two things. One is it would vary high dosing, and the other has to do with the quality of the fish that the fish oil is made from. So the answer to the question is yes. There are reports in the literature of people taking way, way, way more than the recommended amounts, way more than the 2,000 milligrams a day, and having potential interaction with platelets, which can lead to bleeding. All right. Now, most of my patients, if they're going to be having some type of surgical procedure, their doctor wants them to go off of fish oil because of that concern. So between us, I think that's pretty funny that doctors poo-poo supplements, but then they take them seriously when it's time to get ready for a surgical procedure because it's true. It helps promote circulation and they want to make sure it doesn't go too far and cause excess bleeding during a surgery. I don't think it does. There's no data that shows that. But because it improves circulation, that is a concern, and most people get that instruction. Yeah, well, I so want to I've make heard... sure that we cover all our bases today. Um, Good point. What is the fourth essential supplement, in your opinion? The fourth one is a probiotic. A good mm. quality probiotic. That's the other comment I wanted to make about the fish oil, and we can apply it just as well to a probiotic. Not all supplements are made equally, okay? They are not all equivalent to each other. Uh, there have been studies that show that, studies on shelves of discount stores. That's not a good place to buy vitamins. Uh, everything that I have for my patients is what we call pharmaceutical grade, Okay, so for example, the probiotic, I have a couple of different probiotics in my office. One of them is, and they, neither of them require refrigeration. Mm. There, it's such a high level of production of the product that they are stable even at room temperature. Okay, another thing to look out for on probiotics is that the label will often tell you the dose at the time of manufacture rather than you don't know how long it's been once it's in your hands from a store you don't know when that bottle was made you don't know how much time has elapsed so probiotic you know a lot of people are learning about the microbiome there's a lot of companies doing direct to consumer production and selling of products where people can test their microbiome i support the use of these kinds of tests However, I also support not getting too focused and too obsessed on the details and look at where most people will benefit from a probiotic to keep the billions of microbes in our intestinal tract happy and healthy, which is going to also help our immune system. Now, there's a, yeah. a, is there an overdose issue with the uh, uh, supplements for of probiotics in general, or is that a relatively safe thing uh, for people to take? It is relatively safe. I have not been asked that question before, and I am not aware of overdosing in the literature. Of course, if you're getting, if it's not right for your system, there are different types of, of probiotic. Okay. Another one that I have, this is kind of newer. Uh, we can talk about this another time is a spore probiotic. So the spore form of the microbe is more uh, resistant to destruction in the stomach and it's gonna have more benefit in the intestines. A lot of people who have intestinal discomfort, uh, a lot of things like irritable bowel, uh, there's, I think the data will be coming to support the use. Uh, GI doctors are relatively more open to these types of newer ideas 
than uh, some of my other colleagues. So, but I don't know. I, don't, I think it'd be very, very difficult to overdose, and and you'd realize that you wouldn't feel good, and you would back off on the dose. Yeah, uh, Dr. Liz, I, this is great because a lot of people. I, I, I won't say a lot of people, but there has been a trend in recent years to look at nutrition mm. as an important part of our health, not just vitamins and minerals, and but nutrition. Um, yeah. And as boy, every week you see new quote nutritional products out there, you know, right. fruits and vegetables and a pill, that kind of thing. That's uh, right. But this has been very, very enlightening. And I think important to know that you have four uh, top priorities when it comes to supplements. Yeah, and for me, probably one of the most uh, important things is that uh, which you touched upon, which is that the, the quality is not consistent across the board. So that right. unless you get pharmaceutical grade, uh, I know that years ago when I first was thinking about taking fish oil, I was always worried that there was mercury in it. That's you know, right. And oh, things like that. Good point. So Good point. Uh, that's a important one to get a super high quality fish oil. It shouldn't smell fishy. These are my little tips about it. It shouldn't smell fishy. You shouldn't burp a fishy flavor. There's a If that happens with a good quality fish oil, you can throw it in the freezer. And then by the time you swallow the capsules and they're liquid again, they're past your stomach. So that's another little tip yeah. with fish oil in particular. But that's absolutely right. Yeah, fish is a very important one to get a good, a good, good quality one. Good. And you have, um, you have, uh, I don't know if the, the right word is proprietary, but you have blends of vitamins that you provide for your clients, right? For your patients. Yes. And exactly. they can, they can sure. get them online from you by being a patient. The, actually people don't even have to be my patient. They can just go on my website, drlizmd.com. There's a shop and all the, oh, I think all of the supplements probably the vast majority of the supplements that I use with my patients are, are right on there. People can read about them. There's links that'll click through to other documents that show all of, not just all of the ingredients, but also an explanation and a discussion and references, scientific references on every single supplement that I have. People can do some, some high quality research through my website. Yeah. Now I'm I'm old enough to remember when a doctor told me, "Well, you can't self-medicate with this stuff." You know, it was so against any kinds of supplements. Well, you could take vitamin C, but not too much. Well, I'm gonna <laughs> old enough. I'm gonna old enough. You one better. I'm old enough to remember when doctors made house calls. <laughs> with that, yeah, that is old. With it's that, country, uh, just uh, saying. Thank you so much again for uh, just fascinating information that you provide to us. And uh, uh, right. you really are providing a great uh, uh, service and information for people to think about uh, to improve their health. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.